We want to solve the initial value problem, x prime equals three x t squared minus three t squared with the initial condition x of zero equals two. It does not appear as if we can use the method of separation of variables to solve the differential equation because we don't have, because we don't have a product of a function of x and a function of t on the right side of the differential equation. However, notice that it is factorable, so I think if we do factor the right side, we will then have a function of x times a function of t. For the first step, let's replace x prime with dx dt, giving us dx dt equals three x t squared minus three t squared, and now we'll factor the right side by factoring out the greatest common factor of three t squared. This gives us dx dt equals three t squared times the quantity x minus one. In this form, notice on the right side we do have a function of t times a function of x, and therefore we can use the method of separation of variables. Because we have dx dt as our derivative, we need all the x's on the left and all the t's on the right. Let's begin by multiplying both sides of the equation by one divided by the quantity x minus one. Simplifying on the right, x minus one divided by itself simplifies to one. Notice now we have a function of x times dx dt equals a function of t. The last step is to write the differential equation in differential form or multiply both sides of the equation by dt so that dt is on the right side. Which gives us one divided by the quantity x minus one dx equals three t squared dt. And now we integrate both sides of the equation, which gives us the indefinite integral of one divided by the quantity x minus one dx equals the indefinite integral of three t squared dt. Integrating on the left, we have natural log absolute value of the quantity x minus one plus a constant but we'll include the constant on the right, equals on the right, the indef integral of three t squared with respect to t is three times t cubed divided by three, which simplifies to t cubed plus a constant. This plus c here includes the constant on the left and right, combined on the right. And now we use the initial condition, x of zero equals two, to determine the constant c. To do this, we substitute zero for t and two for x. This gives us natural log of the absolute value of two minus one equals zero cubed plus c. Natural log one is equal to zero, giving us zero equals zero cubed plus c, and therefore c equals zero. Now we know that a particular solution, not solve for x, is equal to natural log absolute value of the quantity x minus one equals t cubed. Again, because we know c is equal to zero. We can also write the general solution as natural log of the quantity x minus one equals t cubed, where x is greater than one. The last step is to solve the equation for x, and we can do this two ways. One way is to write the log equation as an exponential equation. Recall natural log is log base e, which means the equivalent exponential equation is e raised to the power of t cubed equals the absolute value of the quantity x minus one. We can actually drop the absolute value though because e to the power of t cubed is always greater than zero. The other option would be to exponentiate both sides of the equation using base e. So e raised to the power of natural log absolute value of x minus one is equal to e raised to the power of t cubed, and e raised to the power of natural log absolute value of x minus one simplifies to the absolute value of x minus one, which must equal e raised to the power of t cubed. But again, because the exponential is always positive, we can drop the absolute value, which gives us x minus one equals e to the power of t cubed. The last step to solve for x is to add one to both sides of the equation, which gives us x or x of t equals e to the power of t cubed plus one for the particular solution. I hope you found this helpful.